In Washington, the political showdown over the payroll tax cut and unemployment benefits continued in the House of Representatives today, where provision to fast-track the approval of the Keystone XL pipeline is drawing attention. Republican leaders in the House refused to bring up the Senate's two-month extension of the tax cut for an up-or-down vote. Instead, they voted to disapprove of the bill and may force the Senate to return to Washington for a conference to resolve the differences between the chambers. The measure on the Keystone XL pipeline was included in both the House bill favored by the Republicans and the Senate bill favored by Democrats. For details on what's ahead, both for the pipeline and the grassroots movement against it, we go to FSRN's Alice Olstein on Capitol Hill. There's a wide gap between the House and Senate bills, a gap Congress must bridge in the next two weeks to avoid increasing taxes on millions of American workers. But the bills have something in common. The language on the Keystone XL pipeline is nearly identical. The provisions say the president must either approve the pipeline within 60 days of the bill's passage, or, if he believes it's not in the national interest, he must justify rejecting the project to several congressional committees and leaders. If no action is taken, the pipeline will be automatically approved after 60 days. The bill also mandates that no further federal environmental review be required, even though environmentalists and indigenous rights groups have criticized the State Department's first environmental impact study as biased. The State Department's inspector general is currently investigating possible conflicts of interest and key government's officials' ties to lobbyists. Yet Republican leaders have insisted that the Keystone provision be included in any payroll tax bill. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell explained why. Three years into this administration, the private sector is still gasping, literally gasping for air. So what we said is, let's also do something that would help create private sector jobs. Well, here's the single largest shovel-ready project in America. The jobs claim is often repeated on Capitol Hill. The pipeline would create 20,000 American jobs and inject millions of dollars into local economies. This pipeline will create 20,000 high-wage construction jobs and 100,000 indirect jobs. The Keystone Pipeline Project uh, will create tens of thousands of jobs immediately. Yet, these numbers come from a study by the Perryman Group, commissioned and paid for by TransCanada, the company behind the pipeline project. When the Cornell Global Labor Institute launched its own independent study, they found only a tenth of the promised jobs were likely to materialize, and those jobs would only last for a few years. We felt that study commissioned by a corporation, which we feel clearly makes an exaggerated exaggerated claims, unsubstantiated claims, is misleading to the public. That's Sean Sweeney, one of the authors of the report. He says the industry-funded study includes the jobs generated by the manufacturing of the steel for the pipeline, but fails to mention that this was done in India several years ago. The Cornell study also found that the pipeline could kill more jobs than it creates, both with destructive and expensive oil spills and by discouraging investment in green energy projects. The earlier versions of Keystone, Keystone 1 and Keystone 2, have resulted in considerably more spills than the company said which could be anticipated. And those spills cost money. They cost public money in the form of cleanup when those resources could be invested somewhere else. Meanwhile, the environmental activists who held months of protests and demonstrations leading to the White House's decision to put off the Keystone until 2013 now have to watch for the outcome of this Capitol Hill battle to plan their next move. Author and activist Bill McKibben is one of the leaders in the movement to stop the construction of the Keystone XL. He says these pipeline policy writers have shown him the need to work against the political power of corporations, especially the fossil fuel industry. We're looking forward to the year to come when we are really going to concentrate on the corrosive role of money in our politics. These guys took a vote on Keystone in the House last week. 234 representatives voted to speed up the approval process. They'd collected $42 million between them from the dirty energy industry. These guys couldn't be more blatant. They take money from companies and then vote on their interests. There's no other way to say it than that. It's disgusting. Both the State Department and the White House have said that fast-tracking the approval process will likely lead to a rejection of the Keystone XL permit, 
as it leaves too little time for a thorough review. Despite the uncertainty, McKibben says the thousands of activists in the U.S. and Canada currently working to stop the pipeline will continue to keep the pressure on President Obama, especially as election fever takes hold. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.